Good afternoon to all the viewers and welcome back to ICA Live, World Class Culinary Online. Today we have the second session in the series of webinars on sugar art. Get decorate cakes like a pro, and it's on the topic of sugar cakes. And it's now I will hand over to our host, Shanaz Raja, Director of Courses at the ICA Dubai. Over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Karun. Indeed, we are back once again with Master Sugar Crafter Nasreen Danki who will demonstrate different role sugar skills for us today. Nasreen's tryst with sugar craft began with having to craft a christening cake for her daughter 25 years ago, an art that she has mastered and now enjoys teaching other people. During our last webinar with Nasreen, the main camera disconnected itself and we had no time to fix it. So we used a laptop for her, which did not capture the details of the techniques that she was demonstrating. So today, hopefully she will be able to show you the details of what she did last time, along with what she's going to do today. As always, we will keep all our questions for Nasreen for the end of the show. So do keep typing them into the chat and I will collect them for you. Without further ado, over to you, Nasreen. Hello. Thank you for that very kind introduction, Shanaz. And hello again to our worldwide audience. This is our next webinar on sugar, rolled sugar skills. And I just wanted to introduce you to skills having two mediums, two modes. One can be a manual mode that you work a rolled sugar skill with. The second can be a mechanical mode. Mechanical meaning you cutters are involved or molds are involved. So with roll sugar skills, one will ask the question, what does it entail? This, like any other artisan craft, relies on design and the use of different colors, the use of different textures and shapes. And hopefully I'm going to introduce you and show you a bit of a little bit of everything today. What I showed you last week and what Shanaz just referred to was just fondant covering, where we covered the cake with fondant and we used crimping, um, a texturing uh, design, surface texturing designs, or embossing. And I've lustered it a bit so that it gives you a little bit of uh, higher visibility. Now, I've put this in place for today, but last week I showed you inlay design. Now, crimping can also be done not just as top border design or base border design, but it can be done as an all over design. For example, as a side panel, side panel design, if you can see that, there you go. So just a little twist. This is something I also made with a crimper. It's a little crimped flower. So just to bring you up to speed with what perhaps the camera did not catch last week, that is what we did, and I'm going to build on it further from there. So last week we covered with fondant, and fondant is our primary medium for covering a cake. It creates the surface to then be able to decorate it. So with that, I'm going to show you a few decorating skills. And what is the importance of learning to decorate? It's because you may know how to bake well, that's the yum factor. But when you know how to decorate well, that's the wow factor. And that's a marriage made in heaven. So to be able to decorate, you create a theme for a cake, for children's birthday cakes, especially where they may want a Disney theme or they may want a um, race car theme. Or if you're entering cake in competition like we did, where we had to do a Game of Thrones theme. So decorating learning how to decorate not only gives your cake a theme it makes your cake occasion specific and it gives it it personalizes the cake for whoever is receiving it for example if it's a, a valentine's cake will have a different set of decorating to it compared to a halloween cake for example a silver wedding anniversary will have a different theme to it than a children's birthday cake, for example. So that's one very important reason to learn to decorate. It gives your cake a theme. It makes it occasion specific. And also, when you learn how to decorate, you give yourself the professional edge. You know, it, it gives you confidence to start your own business. 
It gives you, it augments your earning capacity. If you're already an industry professional, it just gives you the cutting edge um, above what the, what's commercially acceptable in the market. It gives you that professional edge. And to gain that professional edge, proper training and guidance, and of course, practicing what you've learned gives you progress and mastery in this particular skill set. So I'm going to demo for you now, this being the rolled sugar skills, I'm going to demo for you um, how rolling can give you different effects. Can you see this little rose? She's rolled, but so is this little one. It's rose, it's rolled, but look how different it looks. Now, when a tailor for couture is making cloth or satin roses, again, that's rolled, but can you see the difference between all three? And that's what I'm going to try and demonstrate for you. So, without much ado, let me start the demo. Sugar being, all sugars air dry, so I always keep them bagged to prevent them from drying out and they still remain workable. Now before this, so I'm just gonna wake this sugar up, what I call waking it up, it's softening it, getting it ready to roll out. It's just like you would warm up a muscle before you exercised and then you can get a good stretch or whatever. The same thing with the malleability of sugar. So rolled sugar, I'm going to do this one first for you. This rolled, it's called a ribbon rose and it relies entirely on your rolling skill. For example, I'm going to roll, and as I roll, I'm maintaining a straight line on one end, on the entire left-hand side edge, but I'm also maintaining the same thickness that will enable me to give you or show you how this rolled rose is made. So here we go. That's a strip, and I've tried as best as the roller and my skill would permit to give you a straight line, the same thickness to create that little rolled rose as we are into rolled skills, you start rolling this platform and then continue rolling, creating little concentric rolls, but leaving a little air in there as well. So, I will, it's, it's wet. I will demo that for you in a minute. So you reach whatever size it is you want when you roll. Could be a smaller roll, could be a bigger roll. You reach the size you want and then just very mercilessly take a scissor to it, cut the base, and there you have it. Can you see that little roll rose to add to the first one? Now just for today, I've made you already a little plaque showing you how this plaque can be applied to a cake. You could Either use it as a side design. Have I got that level? Here you go. Side design or a topper design or when you learn how to roll the next rows that I'm going to show you, you can decorate an entire cake with it. So I've, I've used these rolled roses as little joiner points. What is a joiner point? It camouflages where one bit of sugar joins into another bit of sugar. And of course, there are little hand done leaves, rolled roses. So these are the ribbon roses that I just showed you. Now, the next demo is going to be <laughs> the little rose in the middle here, actually, is this little rolled rose. But where this was entirely manually rolled, this is going to be cutter assisted. So I'm going to use the same sugar I did. And my cutter is right here, too. OK, good. So there you have it. And once again, I'm just going to set that in there, get it out of my way. This next one, that's the length of your cutter. So you do have to then get your sugar to match that length so that it accommodates the cutter and we can then move on with the making of the flower. So here you are. I'm not going to go too thin, but there. And does it accommodate my cutter? Yes, it does. Press on the cutting edges and she cuts out clean for you. Lift, take away what you do not need. And the cutter leaves you with what you do need. So there you are. Take your sugar out of your cutter. 
Now, there is something. I'm, I'm just going to dust this so that she's non-stick. And then put it onto what is known as a petal pad. It's softer. It's got give compared to my rolling board that has no give. It's hard. And when I put it on this board, I use the ball tool to process those edges, give me a little movement, and make them more petal-like. So this is the quick rolled rose. It's not the classic rose that you would learn in the flower making module, which is our next webinar for you. So if I quickly go around these edges, making them more petal-like with this ball tool, I can then proceed to process this rose. So I have a little bit of sugar glue here, and I fold this in half. Now, although this is cutter-assisted, she still is a rolled rose, because not only did I roll out the sugar, but I'm going to roll up this little rose too. Starting from the outermost, I create the little rosette middle. Need a little glue here. And around we go. So as I roll, I open up those petals, just coax them outwards to give you that rose look. There you have it. On its way to completion. And she's done. So now all I will do, so can you see how different this rolled rose looks to this rolled rose? And once again, I need the assistance of my scissor to cut away this lower tumbler that isn't very aesthetic. But there, once I've cut, can you see that? She's also a rolled rose, but looks very different to the ribbon rolled rose. And I'm using pink so that you can see clearly because of the color contrast against white, how that works. Now, when a tailor makes a rose from, from fabric, he also uses sugar. No, I'm sorry, he also uses satin as a medium. When he, he, he will roll satin roses and stitch them onto like wedding gowns and things like that. So, I'm going to make one for you, which is this third one, which is actually a fabric rolled rose compared to a ribbon rolled rose and a cutter assisted rolled rose. Now, for a fabric rose, again, just wake up my sugar a bit so that I agitate its molecular structure and get it to be pliant and soft and go for it again. So this time, I have to roll very thin because a fabric rolled rose, even though it's rolled out, is doubled on itself. And I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. So rolling this surface really thin, rolling the surface, torturing it as thin as I can go. There you have it. And I will flip this over and fold it in half. And I will roll it much the same as I did that one, except this has a, an edge, like when you're making a rose in satin or silk. So there you have it. I'm starting to roll. And once again, giving small little pockets of concentric air, flat roll, small little pockets of concentric air, you create the rosette. So can you see that? I have just demoed for you three different rolled techniques, all roses, but yet one looks very different to the other. Now my nifty little scissor is required again. Cut off what you do not need, and there you have it. A fabric rolled rose, a cutter-assisted rolled rose, and a ribbon rolled rose. So. And that's, that's the difference between manual and mechanical when you are using a cutter. I have a fun fact for you. Do you know that after World War II, when sugar was an ingredient too expensive and not easy to find, and it was rationed, you know how cake decorators and uh, kept their piping skills honed? 
they used mashed potato because sugar was not available, royal icing was out of the question. So they used mashed potato to practice and keep their piping skills honed. In fact, the early decorators, the early, the advent of cake decorating in yesteryear, I mentioned last week, began in the Tudor courts of England, Queen Elizabeth's court actually. And all the cakes back then were made with royal icing. The drawback was royal icing dried hard when it was dry and was not easy to cut. And so gradually cake decorating evolved into the rolled sugar skills, the fondant skills that we're demonstrating for you today. Now, as with any skill, there are tools to this trade. I've used a few for you here. My Dresden tool, which is my main modeling tool. And there are ball tools, there are rollers, there are cutters, there are a whole host of tools, tweezers, besides the actual flower cutters or strip cutters or various cutters that go with this trade. Look at, if you're talking about rollers, this is a little mini roller. That's the cells. And look at this. Three rollers of the same um, material, made from the same material, but for completely different purposes. Right. Now, to show you. Shall we, shall we put out a question for them? Shall we put out a question for them? Sure. Let me see if you've been listening. And let's yes. go with a, with a question for the audience. Uh, so, which starch is best to use for dusting when rolling sugar paste? Now, you didn't give out the answer, so it would be really nice to see what they have to say. Okay, okay. majority say cornstarch, a few say okay. icing sugar, and even fewer say potato starch. Oh, goodness, I'd like to clear that ambiguity straight away. Now, I do know most of our viewers who've said cornstarch, it isn't because you would have given that answer because it is what is popularly shown on YouTube, on Pinterest, on, on various tutorials that you will see online. But actually, cornstarch reacts, it ferments in sugar. So as you see, I've got my sugar in a bag. If for any reason I had used cornstarch while I was working and I bagged the remaining sugar that may have a little bit of cornstarch in there, tomorrow when I open this bag, it's going to have a whiff to it because of the cornstarch having fermented in the sugar. So the, the actual correct answer is potato starch. I use potato starch because it has a fantastic bonding, binding symbiosis with sugar and does not ferment in your sugar. The third answer of using ice dusting icing sugar, that can be also used, but only when you're using white sugar. If I was rolling out white sugar, I could use white um, dusting powder. But if I was rolling red sugar, I couldn't use uh, dusting powder because it would stain, it would leave white on my red or any colored surface. This does not. She will dust, desensitizing your surface for you without leaving a trace of white. So the correct answer is any starch. You could use potato starch. You could use tapioca starch. You could use rice flour, very finely ground, or and or sugar, dusting sugar, um, icing sugar. So there we have it. Does that um, answer the question for you? I know cornstarch is a general misconception, but keep in mind, it ferments in sugar. So the better thing to use is potato starch or potato flour. OK, now, part of the sugar paste module, we have different pastes that we use. What I use, the pink that I use to make the flowers out of is what is known as gum paste. What is the difference between gum paste or CMC paste? CMC is a, sodium, it's a carboxymethyl sodium that is used to bulk sugar or to make liquid sugar into a paste. What's the difference between gum paste and CMC paste? They're both powders. They both have the same properties, but CMC being sodium is extracted from wood. In fact, it is the food of the white ant, the termite, the cellulose in wood. So it is a natural product. And gum is extracted from the acacia tree, from the gum tree, also processed into a powder and ha shares the same qualities, the bulking ability of CMC paste. So that's what's, I wouldn't call CMC paste gum paste. 
because the powder that is made from gum is called gum tragacanth or gum trag for short and if you use that powder to make your sugar paste it's called gum paste if you use cmc then it's a cmc paste if you use neither then it's a fondant fondant does not have cmc in it and that is why fondant stretches doesn't dry because it doesn't have the drying or the hardening agent in it all right having said that we have a variety of pastes we use fondant is for cake covering our gum paste and our cmc paste is for any and all other decorating because they hold their shape when dry there are modeling pastes there are liquid sugar pastes and i'm going to demonstrate to you a modeling technique also with you can model in fondant because it's not required to hold its own shape because models are placed directly and they're bulkier but here you go i'm going to do a quick demo for you because in modeling there is basic modeling very simple basic modeling if you can see this little guy okay you can take it to more advanced i have a rocking horse cutter assisted which i have painted the saddle on here i have actually modeled a little saddle on along with the hair and the tail and the the mane and the reins so that's painted on that's modeled on again these are simple skills if i brought that forward to show you all the various modeling that little clown has been made with a flower cutter it's, it's a figure been modeled using a flower cutter you can up the ante a bit and make a little soccer shoe for a boy's birthday cake or someone interested in football i've made a little football here now certain nationalities would call that soccer but you know what i'm talking about taking decorating skills to a slightly higher level is modeled babies for baby showers it still falls in the category of modeling you're making all the toys that the baby needs you're modeling and dressing a little girl and a little boy simple skills ad slightly more advanced skills and then this little monster is what we did for the game of thrones cake it is advanced definitely advanced skills but it's a dragon now with my black apron you can't see him so is that clearer for you there you have it he's a dragon and these are advanced modeling skills but as with any other technique there are underlying principles which have to be used to help you achieve modeling decorating fashioning sugar sugar crafting is literally crafting from sugar so what i'm going to demo as a quick little to to elucidate decorating or or um modeling skills is i'm going to make this little bunny for you and show you how simple it is by using the basic principles of modeling again all our sugars are kept because they're air drying they're kept covered in a plastic bag so here we go can uh, monsieur bunny rabbit sit on the side and i need my dresden tool which is almost my right hand where modeling is concerned so if i made a teardrop and then i split that teardrop in half down the middle only halfway let me just roll those edges so they get a little more rounded take you know the potato starch i was talking to you about take your potato starch desensitize your tools and scribe with them scribe with them can you see how i've put the ears in so those are little bunny rabbit ears and you can give it a little twist or you can make your bunny rabbit you know any which way so i'm just going to set him aside for the moment while i make his body the body is made the same way that is why this is such a quick little technique to make a little bunny rabbit so the same thing roll your the sugar into a crack free ball roll it into a teardrop slice or splice that teardrop just in the front a little bit splay them apart and then you can put in little toes or little features that the bunny might have now two parts i have my bunny's head and the body 
let me attach to the rear of the body a little tail for this bunny. So again, I would roll it into a crack-free ball and attach it to the back of him. Now, my Dresden tool being my nifty modeling tool, you can texture this to create the look of a fuzz, a fuzz ball. So, not taking too long. You put the texturing in. All our tools can be our modeling tools, texturing tools, have more than one use to them. So that's the base of him. Now, for his face, can you see the little circles that may comprise his cheeks and his nose and his eyes? I have pre-cut them so that this goes along. So I'm going to put his cheeks in place for you. Oh, let's put his eyes in place for you so that his cheeks can be put on top of the eye. There you have it. That's one eye in position. The second eye, whoops, upside down. The second eye in position. Now, crown it with one cheek. When my daughter was young, she would say chikamu. So, okay, one chikamu in place. Another chikamu in place. So half finished. You see the little cheeks and the eyes. And I have rolled crack free a little ball for, maybe I should put a touch of glue there, a nose. Oopsie, run away, run away nose. There you have it. And you just have to, again, perhaps a little glue might help. But there, our bunny rabbit has a companion now. So it's as easy as that, can you see? Two little rabbits with basic modeling skills and we'll let's set him aside to dry. So you are taught modeling. It's, it's part of the first module when you um, are doing the sugar paste module. I have another question for you. So are you ready guys? Let's see if you get the right answer for this question. Let's put it on for them. Which tool is used to thin, uh, used on thin edges to make them wavy? Uh, zero percent here. Yeah, it's building up. It's building up. Okay. Fifty percent say it's the ball tool. Twenty-six percent say it's the dressing tool, and thirty-one percent say it's the texture roller. Okay, for those who were the 50% that answered ball tool, you're right. I did demo when I was rolling out this rose. I did demo for you how you, you thin the edges to make them more petal-like. You thin the edges to take away that thick edge that the cutter has given you, one, and to animate that edge to make it petal-like. Too. So yes, well done to those who answered, the 50% who answered the ball tool. Now you can, you can sc scrape an edge of a petal to make it thinner, but that won't be as, the Dresden will not be as efficient as the ball tool. And that is why I have a ball tool in every size. You'll have the BB one here. You've got that's a different size to that's a different size to that and the big guy. Now, tools come in different materials. You can get stainless steel ones as well. But without our ball tools, these are it's difficult to get those edges unless you do it manually. And, and Christmas might be here first. But anyway, so hope that helps with showing you a few of the tools of the trade and how they're used. Now, I've asked you two questions. Here's your chance to ask me if there are any questions you want clarified or any doubts you have where sugar paste is concerned. And say now or forever hold your peace. So I think over to you, Shanaz. Have they been asking questions as we've gone along? A few, yes. So we have uh, Rochelle. She wants to know, I think we touched upon this last time, but no harm in repeating it. What's the difference mm -hmm. between fondant, sugar paste, and gum paste? Okay, 
they are all pastes made from sugar. So they're all, in essence, sugar pastes. But fondant does not have CMC in it. CMC is the agent that bulks it, dries it, hardens it. So fondant never dries. That is why she's the most slow drying, the most malleable. You can roll it into a sheet. And so fondant not having very much or any CMC in it makes her the softest, the weakest paste, and the most slow drying. The next one, which is our gum paste or our CMC paste, does have either or, I mentioned earlier, gum trag or CMC in it. And that bulks it hard. So when you're making something that you want it to hold its shape, you could not possibly make an upright like so with fondant. It wouldn't be able to support itself. It would just flop. Fondant doesn't dry. Any of our books or anything that you do that you want it to hold its shape independent of support from the cake, it stands independent, is made with gum paste or your CMC sugar paste. What was the third one, Shanaz? Just fondant, sugar paste, and gum paste. So okay, so sugar paste and gum paste is the same thing, and that is why I explained earlier, when you make it with gum tragacanth, it's called gum paste. If you do it with CMC paste, it's called CMC paste. But both gum trag and CMC have the hardening ability to, uh, to dry sugar quicker. So hopefully that answers the question. Do we have another? Yes, Jennifer says, are eggs used in making fondant? Are eggs used? Not necessarily. I mean, you can have a fondant with egg, egg white, not the entire egg. You can have, as you know, there are different types of fondants. You can have marshmallow fondant, you can have vanilla fondant, you can have plain sugar fondant. So there, different recipes may call for um, an egg white, the use of an egg white but generally not. It's, you, you have other ingredients that retard the drying process, which could be liquid glucose, which could be glycerine, sugar, paste, water even, or and egg white. So, but no okay. CMC. But to remember that a fondant does not have a CMC in it. Any so, other questions? Uh, Yes, Alia wanted to know where to get the tools and Nivedita wanted to know where to get uh, the potato starch. So I think uh, online is a very good option from you for you. Or you can yep. always yep. come in contact with Nasreen too. She has a few things. Yes, and her. I can point you in the right direction. Yes, tell you where to get yes. them. But mostly everything's available when you come for the class. We give you our gift to you is a little starter kit. And uh, it's got the tools of the trade in it. But just to, to begin you on your sugar crafting journey. And I know where to, I'd be able to point you in the right direction as to where you get all the other tools. Because our tools are quite specialized and not easily available. So, yes. Hope that answers that and, question. Uh, Ray Nuka wants to know if you can use marzipan instead of sugar. Why not? Look at these little, look at. It'll give you a different taste. But when I model little fruits, can you see these fruits? They're marzipan because they're one, 10 gram little pieces. They're petty fours. And when a person bites into a marzipan or an almond paste, it's like having, for those familiar with what a badam barfi is, it's made out of almond paste. So I know that's, a, that's an Asian term, but it's literally a sweet made in, in Asia and in India with almond paste. And marzipan is nothing but an almond paste. So I have modeled these little fruit because when you bite into it, instead of biting into a lump of just neat sugar, these have nutritional value too, being almond. So yes, you can model with um, marzipan, but you cannot expect to get any level of, you can't roll marzipan thin to make flowers, for example, because yes, you can, you can make flowers, but they'll be thick and quite doughy. They won't give you the finesse of rolled sugar flowers. Look at the, 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 the display we've got out there, which I will bring into focus in our next webinar, where it's just flower making. And I will be using a CMC paste for that, not fondant and not marzipan. So if you want a thicker finish, by all means, for flowers, by all means, use a marzipan. But if you want to model 
Now, going back to the Tudor courts, the initial modeling, the figures and the trinkets that they used to put on cakes in the early days were all marzipan modeled. But with the advent of sugar coming in and the final, the refining of techniques, sugar paste was, it evolved into sugar paste. So hope that okay. answers that question. Can water be used to stick sugar paste and fondant? You know, you use the glue. There are, yes. Yeah. Water is the weakest glue. So when, can you see how I have attached a yellow basket leaf panel to my white sugar paste, to my fondant? Now, when the fondant is going to entirely support a panel of sugar, entirely supported by the main frame, which is the cake, you can use water. But a word of caution, don't use water from the tap. Don't use drinking water even that you think you've got it out of a Masafi bottle. You've got to use, you've got to boil the water, let it cool. And then once it's sterilized, you can use it as it's the weakest form of glue for sugar. But sterilize your water because it prevents the formation of mold or fungus between two layers of sugar. So the answer is yes, you can use water, but it has limited uses. So Nivedita wants a little bit of more information on how to show store sugar paste and fondant once it's used, before it's used and after it's modeled. You can give her both the options. She's asked after it's modeled. After it's modeled, if you, it, all sugars are air drying. So after it's modeled, when you've modeled it into anything, you let it air dry. It's got to stay in the open to be able to shape up harden into the shape you've modeled it into. But before you model, you definitely have to keep it plastic bound. Keep the air off it completely. And when you're not using the bag, knot it, put a little bit of a, a quick release knot and put it into a, a lock and lock box to further keep the air off it. And your sugar stays almost indi indefinitely with protecting her from air exposure because all our sugar pastes are air drying. Does that help? And Budhasi, yes, and Budhasi refuses, says he's not going to get off the webinar unless we tell, uh, tell him how sugar paste is made. How sugar paste is made. As with any paste, it's a combination of different ingredients. If you don't want it to dry, there are drying retardants, like I mentioned earlier, like the liquid glycerine and the liquid, glu sorry, liquid glucose and glycerine that are put into it to keep it supple. If you want it to dry, there are the CMCs or the gum pastes, but most of our sugars are, the base of it is egg white, into which you would put various ingredients Sugar, I mean, dusting sugar, not dusting sugar, icing sugar would be one main component, along with other bulking agents, um, smoothing agents, emollients in it to keep it supple, to be able to, be, to roll it out and keep it from cracking. And there are various sugar pastes. So I'm not sure because pastillage is a different recipe to gum trag or CMC paste is a different recipe, to fondant is a different recipe, to royal icing is a different recipe, modeling paste is a different recipe. So it's not shaping up. And that is what you're taught when you come here. You're actually taught which sugar achieves which finished product successfully. So I hope that answers your question. OK, one last uh, question before we sign off. Shahad wants to know how to reduce cracking of sugar paste when working with it? Okay. How to prevent it from well, cracking? Firstly, firstly, when you are working, as you saw me doing a little while ago, every piece of sugar I removed that I did not need, I bagged it immediately. Don't allow the air to get to it. It keeps the sugar moist because all our sugars are air drying. Two, what if your sugar has already dried and not dried hard? If she's dried hard, you've lost it. You've lost the sugar, she's unworkable again. But if she's semi-dry and still a bit, you can knead it a bit, but it's cracking, just put a little bit of glycerine in your hand with a little bit, coupled with a little bit of um, veg fat, Crisco, the white uh, Crisco, mix it, make a paste, and give you, knead, knead it into your sugar. And that rejuvenates it, gives it back the moisture content, the emollient content that it has lost. 
And um, But you have to remember, there is up to a certain point only that you can rejuvenate a sugar that has dried out. Because what also is in that dried surface is crust hard bits that cannot be rejuvenated, especially with royal icing. Hope that helps. Yes, that's all the questions, Nasreen. OK. So then what I'd like to take you forward with is this is our, our, our first webinar was the introduction to sugar paste. This is the rolled sugar skills, which is independently a certified module. The next webinar is going to be on flowers, flower skills, which is also a rolled skill, but they're very independent to any other decorating technique that is used for cake decorating. And that also, the flower module, is also an independently certified program. And the third module is liquid sugar skills. Piping, royal icing, buttercream, liquid, anything that comes through a nozzle, liquid sugar skills. So once you've put these three modules into place, gained the three different skill sets, you earn a master's certificate, which just helps you in your onward journey if you are a, an industry professional or a beginner enthusiast. Once qualified, you then have the know-how, which gives you the confidence, which gives, ultimately ends in the success of opening up your own business for yourself. So until next week and our flower making skills, which is the most fun module, I leave you with a goodbye for now. And over to you, Shanaz. Thank you, Nasreen. Those, those were some very useful and easy techniques you taught us. But believe me, everybody, it's not as easy as Nasreen makes it look. It needs a lot of practice to get there. About this particular webinar, there are no handouts to share as it is a technical skill that has been demonstrated. So you can watch the replay if you need to follow the technique shown. And, uh, if, and if you need to learn more, you know where to find us and I can assure you that it is the best investment you can make into yourself. Thank you, thank you everyone, and see you again with Nasreen next week, same time, same place, same day. Until then, thank you and bye bye. Thank you, Chanel and uh, Chef Nasreen for yet another wonderful session, which I call it exquisite. Uh, those my new details showcased today were just indeed wow, you know. For those who missed out on the complete live action, an email will soon follow with a replay video of this webinar. And we do encourage and do showcase your cake decoration skills on your social media platforms by tagging at uh, Nasreen Danki and also at IC Dubai. We look forward to seeing you in the next session on sugar flowers. Until then, goodbye from all of us here.